I now rank the 10 best rock and metal albums of 1978. I thought for this video I'd go back to the late 70s before progressing on with the 90s stuff. I can save that for another time. But I needed to do this video because I haven't done a rankings video of that important since I ranked the 10 best albums of 1979 some 4 or 5 months ago. So let me get right to it. We start off in the 10th spot with Black Sabbath's Never Say Die, released on September 29th, 1978. This would be the final Black Sabbath album to feature Ozzy Osbourne until 13, released in 2013, as he would be fired from the group the following year. When this record was originally released, it made it to number 12 on the UK charts. On the country's UK rock and metal charts, some 45 years later, it reached number 9 when it was released in the States. It reached number 69 when I ranked all the Black Sabbath studio albums many months back. It was like I ranked it in the bottom three of the worst Sabbath albums. And the only standout track was Never Say Die. Trouble. The first full-length studio album from Whitesnake takes the ninth spot. David Coverdale founded Whitesnake after leaving Deep Purple in 1976. A lot of the lyrics were commenced by Coverdale himself, while Mick Moody and Bernie Marsden contributed in the songwriting process. The standout tracks include Lie Down, A Modern Love Song, The Time is Right for Love, their rendition of the Beatles classic Day Tripper and Nighthawk, Vampire Blues. The reason why Coverdale named this record Trouble was the fact that his first child was born when recording this record. Hemispheres, the sixth studio album from Canadian trio Rush, takes the eighth spot. Hemispheres released on October 24th, 1978. The record reached the top 15 in the UK and the Canadian charts and number 47 in the US. A steady seller in Rush's back catalog. Side 1 was dominated by Cygnus X1 Book 2 The Hemispheres. It's an 18 minute sequel to Cygnus X1 Book 1 The Voyage from A Pharaoh the Kings which was Rush's previous album. While Side 2 features shorter tracks like Circumstances and The Trees before the 90 minute epic La Bella Strangiato, or an exercise of self indulgence to close out the record. It went platinum in the United States and in Canada, and went silver in the UK. Jazz, the seventh studio effort from British quartet Queen, takes the seventh spot. Released on November 10, 1978, Jazz is the follow up to News of the World which features the mega hits We Will Rock You and We Are the Champions. Jazz went platinum in the United States, reached number 6 on the Billboard US, while reached number 2 in the UK. The standout tracks were Fat Bottom Girls, Bicycle Race, and Don't Stop Me Now. Next up is Pieces of Eight, the eighth studio effort from Styx, an American progressive rock act from Chicago, Illinois. Released in September of 78, it's the follow-up to 1977's The Grand Illusion, which featured the hits Come Sail Away and Fooling Yourself, An Angry Young Man. On Pieces of Eight, the standout hits were Blue Collar Man, Long Nights, and Renegade. And much like The Grand Illusion, Pieces of Eight was a triple platinum album. It reached number six on the Billboard 200. Ace Frehley's first solo outing cracks the top five, this was released on the 18th of September of 78, the same day as his fellow KISS members Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, and Peter Chris released solo outings themselves. And out of all the KISS solo releases, despite all four of them going platinum, fans seem to love Ace's solo album more than they did Gene's, Paul's, or even Peter's. Ace's cover of Hello's New York Groove became a top 20 hit on the Billboard Hot 100, the highest chart placement for any of the singles put out from the 1978 solo records. Other standout tracks include Rip It Out, Speeding Back to My Baby, Wiped Out, Snow Blind, and the instrumental epic Fractured Mirror. Don't Look Back. The second studio effort from Boston takes the fourth spot. Don't Look Back was released in August of 1978, reaching number one on the Billboard 200 and went seven times platinum. 
Don't Look Back is the second biggest selling album behind the self-titled 1976 debut. The standout tracks include the hits Don't Look Back and Feel Unsatisfied. Band leader Tom Schultz had did a tremendous job producing the follow-up to Boston's debut. Who are you? Who are you by The Who takes the third spot. Who Are You would be the last album for drummer Keith Moon, who would die three weeks later after the album's release. Despite that it got mixed reviews, this record was a commercial success, reaching number two on the U.S. album charts and number six on the U.K. album charts, and went double platinum in the U.S. The song, Who Are You, is the only track that really stood out. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Foreigner's Double Vision takes the runner-up spot. Double Vision reached number three on the Billboard US charts and went seven times platinum, making this and their compilation record, Records, released in 1982, the band's best-selling albums ever in their entire history. But Double Vision is known for the title track, Hot Blooded and Blue Morning, Blue Day. I actually ranked this album number three when I did an album rankings video on Foreigner and its discography many months ago. So feel free to check that episode out. And the best hard rock heavy metal album of 1978 happens to go to Van Halen's self-titled debut. Van Halen was founded by brothers Eddie and Alex Van Halen, along with David Lee Roth and Michael Anthony. The first Van Halen record had some well-known songs like Running With The Devil, Ain't Talking About Love and Jamie's Crying, and their cover of The Kinks' You Really Got Me. The album was recorded in a little over a month, and it became an instant commercial success, peaking at number 19 on the Billboard 200, and it's one of two Van Halen albums to receive Diamond certification, the other being 1984. And there you have it! From Black Sabbath's Never Say Die, to Van Halen's debut, this has been my rankings list of the 10 best rock and metal albums of 1978. I thought about adding an honorable mention like I did weeks back when I ranked the 10 best rock and metal albums of 91, but I was like, nah, fuck it. That's it for this week. Don't